Environmental toxins are a leading cause of chronic disease in the West today. And it's vastly under-talked about, and it's vastly under-researched. But the research that is here today is clear. Environmental toxins are a leading cause of things like autoimmune conditions, infertility, hormonal problems, mental health issues, heart attack and stroke, cancers. Just because something's common doesn't necessarily make it normal. U ubiquity doesn't necessarily equate with normalcy. And we should not normalize things like environmental toxins. And it's easy to get fearful or become hyperbolic or overstate things like this. So I try to have a measured, balanced, contextual approach to something as big and as you know, pervasive as environmental toxins. We have to live in our modern world. We cannot live in a bubble and be fearful because stressing about this stuff isn't good for our health either. But we have to know what we're up against to do something about it and take measured, practical steps in our life to support our body's detoxification system. Because the reality is the majority of our genetics haven't changed in over 10,000 years. And this is what researchers are looking at as to why we're seeing this epidemic rise of autoimmune conditions and hormonal problems, infertility and mental health issues. is what they call an epigenetic genetic mismatch or a chasm between epigenetics, our environment, and genetics, our, our genes. So of our genetics, if human genetics haven't changed in 10,000 years, think about how much has changed in just a few generations. Just a few generations, your great-great-grandparents weren't having to breathe the things you're breathing in right now. They weren't drinking the water that you're drinking right now. They're not eating the food that you're eating right now. They're not using the products in their home that are being used today. And that is triggering genetic predispositions that have been there for 10,000 years, but are being triggered and awoken like never before because of what, again, this evolutionary mismatch. So what can we do? We can decrease that mismatch. We can bring unity between epigenetics and genetics with practical advice. And I've seen when we've implemented practical things for telehealth patients to make their life a cleanse, to support their body's natural detoxification pathways, their body can is a, their body is amazingly resilient and it actually doesn't take much. So what are the common culprits of environmental toxins? We have to look at things like herbicides and pesticides. They're used in a lot of mo uh, modern agriculture and modern farming. And we have to look at our soil microbiome. So we teach telehealth patients when to go organic when they can, when it's within their budget, and things maybe they don't have to get organic. So we can be practical and realistic and sustainable for people. And you don't have to break the bank to eat healthy food that loves them back and isn't going to be contributing to that toxic burden in their body. So we have to look at our food. We have to look at how our food is grown. But we also have to look in our home and the products that people are using as far as their cleaning products or their personal hygiene products. Many things are illegal in other countries that in the United States and other Western countries is becoming more and more legal. We have to be informed as far as consumers are concerned when it comes to the ingredients we're breathing in as far as cleaning products or our cooking appliances or cooking cookware as far as our pans and our pots. We have to look at lots of different things in our home that are marketed to us in very shiny, flashy ways that may not be the best for our health. So take an inventory of the products and start off simple. You can lean into it and not feel overwhelmed. Your body's amazingly resilient. So there's two sort of classes of environmental toxins. There's man-made chemicals, things like herbicides, pesticides, PFAS or forever chemicals, heavy metals, and then there are biotoxins. Break that word down, biotoxins or natural biotoxin. These are things that have been a part of nature for eons, things like bacteria, mold, viruses, they can release toxins as well. It's this bombardment, it's this confluence of different environmental factors that are triggering these issues. So biotoxins have always been around, they've never been healthy for people to get viral infections or mold toxins. Even if you look at ancient literature, like the, the Bible, for example, in the Old Testament talks about mold infestation of a home and the Bible's recommendation was to burn the house down if your house had mold. Now we have 
better technology to do mold remediation and support detox pathways where you don't have to burn your house down. But if someone's dealing with mold toxicity, it can cause things like brain fog and fatigue. It can trigger autoimmune problems, food sensitivity issues. People end up fearing food when they have food sensitivities and digestive issues and autoimmune problems, which are on the rise. But it may not be the food's fault. It may be an environmental toxin, like an herbicide and pesticide. It may be a biotoxin, like mold, that's tr triggering inflammation and stress in the body. So I have found in my clinical experience that when you deal with the environmental toxin piece, and you make your life a cleanse, and it could be herbicides, pesticides, it could be a forever chemical, it could be a thing, something like a mold toxin. When you deal with that, that empties that proverbial bucket, and your body's not always you know, at its tipping point, overflowing in symptoms. We have some wiggle room, we have some resilience capacity. You can live your life, you can eat foods that love you back, and a lot of times those digestive problems can go away when you deal with the environmental toxin component. The symptoms of environmental toxicity is far-reaching because what's the mechanism of action here? What's it actually doing to the body? Well, it's driving inflammation levels in the body. It's disturbing the microbiome. It's creating cellular inflammation. Well, that could show up like brain fog. It can show up like fatigue, anxiety, depression, food sensitivity issues, autoimmune problems, hormonal problems, things like infertility. So we see those symptoms as check engine lights but what's causing that check engine light? What's underneath that proverbial hood for many people, at least a component of why that check engine light is on, are environmental toxins. So it's not enough for us to say, well, this symptom is automatically environmental toxins. And that's why, you know, in healthcare, just because it looks like a duck doesn't mean it's actually a duck. It could be a goose or a duck imposter or something else. We have to do a differential diagnosis. We have to get a thorough health history. We have to understand your case, your bioindividuality. What are the pieces to your health puzzle? My point in talking about environmental toxins here is just, it's just not looked at. It's just not discussed. And you can't address what's going on unless you look there. That's why I created the Autoimmune Health Reset Training. This free training walks you through how to uncover hidden inflammation from home and how to begin healing in a way that's simple, clear, and evidence-based. Click below to watch because you deserve more than a guess. You deserve answers and you deserve to feel like yourself again.